Oh my stars, do you believe in magic? Bewitched made it so. And as we watched spellbound Samantha with the twitch of her nose, a little magic found its way to us on the other side of the television screen. So how did they even decide on the nose twitch? I don't know. And those practical effects, how were they done? Well, I'm your host, the immortal Nostalgic Nick, breaking the cardinal rule of wizardry, revealing the magician's tricks. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up for us and subscribe to the channel. Click the bell for notifications. But without further ado, let's hop on our broomsticks and be off. A tale of two movies. Bewitched rose to fame during a pretty revolutionary time in television, focusing on female leads and throwing in the supernatural. But even something as fantastically trendy as Bewitched got inspiration elsewhere. Show creator Sol Sachs took inspiration from I Married a Witch and the film Bell, Book, and Candle. I'm one. You're one what? One of the people that the book's about, and Nikki's one too. Sachs didn't have to worry about copyright issues like its competitor I Dream of Jeannie did, since Columbia Pictures owned those films and Screen Gems, which made Bewitched. Two of our leading ladies have some surprisingly biblical roots. The first book of Samuel has a story of Saul going to the Witch of Endor so he can commune with the late Samuel. Samuel and Endor became Samantha and Endora. Originally, they were named Cassandra and Matilda. Hilda, respectively. I like the change. Something wicked this way comes. Let's talk about that iconic intro. Goliath Animation Studio Hanna-Barbera created the opening, adding it to a packed resume that includes the Flintstones, Scooby-Doo, and the Jetsons. Some Flintstones episodes even feature magical cameos by the Bewitched cast. Your dog certainly likes chocolate cookies. Hi kids, I'm Samantha. As for the catchy music, Bewitched did originally have a theme song with lyrics. Jack Keller composed the music before he worked with the monkeys. Howard Greenfield wrote the lyrics, but they never were used in the show. But a bunch of artists did record their own versions, like Steve Lawrence and Peggy Lee. Bewitched, bewitched, you've got me in your spell. Producers toyed with the idea of using the song Bewitched, Bothered, and Bewildered from the Rodgers and Hart musical Pal Joey, but it would have been quite expensive. Cutting Costume Corners Bewitched kept a pretty small costuming budget, so much so that extras and even supporting actors were told what to bring to wear from their own wardrobe. Even Samantha and Endora were wearing outfits straight from the closets of Elizabeth and Agnes at times. Pretty much everything you see Sam wear is an outfit Elizabeth owns. Throw in the fact that Samantha also had a wicked counterpart Serena to clothe, and wowzers, that's a lot of pressure. The show credited Serena to the pseudonym Pandora Spox, a play off of Pandora's box. And this fake actress even got her own fan mail. And that also meant that the eight and a half carats of old mine diamond brooch that Endora always wore was actually Agnes Moorhead's. Elizabeth Montgomery famously loved the brooch. And when Agnes died, she willed it to her TV daughter. A twitch in time. With a simple nose twitch, you knew Samantha was weaving some magic, usually at Darren's expense. It became as iconic as Jeannie's bow in I Dream of Jeannie, and Lee Majors' slow motion run in Six Million Dollar Man. But it's so specific. What made them choose a nose twitch instead of waving her hands or a wand? At first, the script simply declared Samantha cast spells with some vague arm gesture. Show director William Asher wanted something out of the ordinary, and it actually took two months to find. Coming about when Asher told Elizabeth Montgomery, do that thing you do when you're nervous. She couldn't think of what it was, got nervous, and boom, a simple, wonderful nose twitch occurred. They added a xylophone, to really highlight the little movement, which is achieved by moving your upper lip and letting the nose follow. Let's give it a try. <laughs> Making the magic happen. 
In today's world of CGI and post-production magic, it's fun to hear the links that shows had to go to for some practical magic. Animatronics, clever doubles, camera cuts, they used it all. Look carefully and you'll spot a near invisible wire lifting up a household item. Or in other cases, they used fast motion or backwards motion film. On the days when Samantha cleans up a room with magic, Montgomery would raise her arms up, the director would call cut, and she'd stay like that while stagehands moved everything around. Then a simple action and she'd finally move again. Just mind the pyrotechnics. Bernard Fox, who played Dr. Bombay, shared that he'd been injured by them sometimes. And when characters changed clothes in the blink of an eye, they actually secured their shoes to the floor exactly where they were standing. Then run backstage, change, and step back into their shoes. Now that's how you nail a mark. York for Sergeant. For the first five seasons of Bewitched, Dick York played Samantha's lucky and unlucky mortal husband in way over his head. Thank you from the bottom of my withers. <laughs> Not at all, my boy. Then he was replaced by Dick Sargent, who played a different Darren. Back in 1959, York was in the film They Came to Cordura, and on the second to last day of filming, an accident led to him tearing all the muscles in the right side of his back and damaging his spine. His recuperation options were drugs, really, really strong drugs. And this injury and drug reliance chased him through the first half of Bewitched. And York became tired and grumpy and in a lot of pain. It affected everything. And he even had a seizure, forcing him to miss whole episodes before the replacement. Ironically, Agnes Moorhead didn't agree with Andorra and loved Dick York. So when Sargent took over, she said, quote, I don't like change. Darren, stop, mother. Too late. It's hard to say who was better, certainly a personal preference. York played an indignant Darren because magic was new and frightening. But when Sargent took over, he figured Darren had years to get used to marrying a witch. So he shouldn't be yelling so much. And we want to know, do you have a preference of the two Darrens? Let us know in the comments. This broom would not fly today. Sometimes sitcoms try a very special episode, highlighting an important message or deviating from the humor formula. And Bewitched had something like that. I'm talking about the famous Christmas episode, Sisters at Heart, where a hateful exec didn't want to do business with Darren because he thought he married an African-American woman. Meanwhile, Sam's daughter, Tabitha, was best friends with the woman's daughter, and the two loved pretending they were sisters. A spell from Samantha went awry, and the two ended up with black and white spots on their skin. And she used a similar trick to basically put everyone in blackface at the company exec's party. And that helped him see Sam's important message of equality. This heavier episode was written by two dozen African-American 10th grade students at Jefferson High School. And while blackface is never a good idea, idea for a show, or anything for that matter. The innocent and powerful message reminds us that we should listen to kids more often. The Next Generation Elizabeth Montgomery was actually pregnant three times during the show's run. For her first pregnancy, they shot all the scenes without her. Then they did her part separately after she had given birth, while pregnancies number two and three led to the in-show birth of Tabitha and then Adam. The name Tabitha was Montgomery's own idea, from the daughter of actor Edward Andrews. She loved it because it sounded old-fashioned, but it's like nails on a chalkboard when she sees it spelled with two A's in the show. In instead of an eye. Hallowed Homes. 1164 Morning Glory Circle is practically a pilgrimage spot for the Wiccan, and it's still standing. Its new location is the Warner Brothers Ranch Studios. There aren't formal tours, but supposedly staff there can be talked into showing you around. Of course, this property was mostly used for exterior shots. The inside, backyard, garage, and porch were mostly a soundstage. In every single episode, this famous abode prominently features the color green, an homage to the color as a witchy symbol. Think the Wicked Witch of the West. 
and the face paint kids might use for Halloween. Bewitched also features a cameo from Arrival House. In Season 4, Episode 21, Hippie Hippie Hooray, we get to see Larry and Louise Tate's home, and their kitchen is actually Tony Nelson's from I Dream of Jeannie. Oh, Major Healy, what are you talking about? Oh, you know what I'm talking about. I know he's handsome and irresistible. You gotta think about Tony. <laughs> When you see outside shots of Samantha's home, keep an eye out for the genie house just down the street. The magic ended for Montgomery. All good things must come to an end. For most of its runtime, Bewitch ranked high, usually near the top 10. And it was green lit for seasons 9 and 10. Problem was, Montgomery didn't even approve of going into season 5. In fact, she was ready to retire before Bewitched ever began. But her husband and show producer Bill Asher talked her out of it. Then, ABC kept making offers you don't need to be a godfather to know not to refuse. But with each season, it became harder and harder for money to make a difference. And little by little, Montgomery noticeably didn't want to be there. Finally, she walked away in search of much grittier roles, but it helped that she owned 20% of the show and got a ton off of residuals. For more on where she went after Bewitched, be sure to check out our cast rewind after this. We still have a little magic left. Bewitched enchanted us with glimpses at how life could be with just a little bit of magic. I don't know about Darren, but I'd be pretty thrilled to be in his place, or so I think. So let's discuss. What was a fantastic episode of Bewitched that you recall? Who was your favorite character from the sitcom? Get in the comments and let us know which Darren you preferred and more. We wanna hear from you. And if you enjoyed our Bewitching deep dive, please be sure to give it a thumbs up for us and subscribe to the channel so you never miss a memory. From all of us here at Do You Remember, thanks very much for watching.